Have you noticed this trend within documentary filmmaking where they're starting to film a lot of interviews outside, particularly in the true crime subgenre? Personally, I think it's a really interesting way to add a bit of personality to an interview because most interview setups are actually kind of boring because you're usually just in someone's living room or their bedroom, whatever. And Aside from lighting control, you don't really have much set decoration. So I think a lot of filmmakers now are stepping outside just to change things up a little bit, which I think is fine. It's a genre that could become stale if you don't try to keep innovating. So shooting outdoors is just an easy way to add a little bit of personality to an interview that might be kind of boring. Now, as small filmmakers like you and I, it's not that easy to film an interview outside. These big productions have generators and big trucks and they can run power cables basically anywhere they need to to set up lights, to set up audio, to set up monitors. But for us, we might just have a light and a camera and not much else to sort of figure that out. It's not like we all have access to thousands of feet of electrical cabling to run to a house or to run to something, to run to a generator, or even bringing a generator on set is kind of an insane thing in itself because they're noisy, they're loud, and they can be expensive. But I wanted to attempt doing an outdoor interview on a budget and doing it in a way that I know is accessible to filmmakers like you and I. And so I'll show you how I put this all together, but first I wanna lead with this little true crime interview that I shot completely outside without access to electricity. You hear that tractor in the background? Tell me about the day the dog bit you. I don't know. It was like 95. Just got off the toilet. One thing led to another. The dog bit me. Nine one one. What is the nature of your emergency? Hi. Yeah. My dog just bit me as I was getting off the toilet. Do you require medical assistance? I think I'm okay. What do you have to say for yourself? Can I be honest for a second? Like, I think it's kind of fucked up you brought the dog here. Okay, you know what, I'm kind of done with this right now. Quick shout out to my brother Michael for being an absolute champion sport for being a part of that. We were actually doing a completely different video and then this kind of idea just sort of pumped into my head of like, we should try this. Let's see if we could put something together. So all of it was mostly improv on the spot and then we just kind of did a little bit of post work after to bring it all together. So thank you, Michael, for being awesome in this video and you will see Michael more on this channel as we continue to make more videos together. So really quickly, let's just talk about the breakdown for this interview. So what I had was the Godox SL300 as my main light source with this giant softbox on it. Then I just set up a lawn chair and then on the opposite side, I had a bit of a negative fill and all this stuff has links in the description so you can buy all of this and look at it. It's all relatively affordable. Like honestly, this negative fill thing that I set up is like super cheap. It's just a piece of black fabric and some really crappy stands, but it worked well with a sandbag. You just kind of set it there and it's just gonna give a little bit of darkness on the side of the face so you get that nice Rembrandt feel. And you might be thinking to yourself, why set up this 300 watt light? You're outside, it's gonna have all this natural daylight. I wanted to expose for the sky behind the subject. And by doing so, it would have made them too dark. So now that I have this key light here, it means I'm not gonna blow out highlights. I'm gonna have a nice soft light on the side of his face rather than dealing with the sun, which can be completely unpredictable. And when you're shooting an interview over a long period of time, consistency is key for continuity. So if you were using the sun, you're gonna see shadows and the light change. We're actually shooting in the sun right now. And so you might see the light even shift within this video, but because it's for YouTube, I don't care as much. If you're doing an actual production, you really want that consistency. So setting up a light is very crucial. But the challenge with setting up a light is you're gonna to have to power that light. So the way we did that is with the Blue Eddy AC50S. Now, quick disclaimer, this little power bank was sent to me. I don't have any obligation to make a positive review. I'm not being paid for it. All it was 
was sent to me for me to use it, and this is how I use it. So I'm gonna tell you that this thing is absolutely fantastic. We had this Godox 300 watt light plugged into this thing for about two hours, and I only used like 30, 40% of battery. Now I only had the light at 50%. At 300 watt, I'm sure it would drain it a lot quicker, but the fact that we were able to film for like two hours with this thing left on, and I wasn't even worried about turning it off in between takes, I just let it run. And we barely scratched the surface of the capacity of this power bank. It meant we didn't have to run power cables to the house, to anywhere. It would have actually been impossible in that setup where we shot for me to run power from anything but either a generator or this power bank. And the thing about bringing an actual generator on set, they call it a Jenny, is a lot of them are noisy, they're gas powered, they're diesel powered. So you have to set them up quite far away from your set even to be usable so you don't hear the damn thing. And this thing is entirely silent. There is a fan built in and it did kick in when you have it on a higher load, but it's not anything you should worry about in terms of sound. It's not gonna be caught in any of your audio. You don't have to worry about it at all. So this thing, for the purpose of how we would use it, is silent. Now on top of it being able to power the light on set, I also use it to charge batteries for the camera. So I use the Lumix S5, which I'm using to shoot this right now. So in between batteries dying, I just threw it on the USB-C port and I was able to charge my batteries. You can also charge your phone with this thing because it has a wireless charging pad on top. It's got two outlets, four USB ports, a USB-C port. It's even got a DC out. So if you need to use like a cigarette lighter charger, it has that too. And then on top of that, it's even a flashlight. I cannot even begin to tell you how invaluable a piece of gear like this is on set. I'm so into equipment that actually provides practical value. Like a lot of the things we buy are just for perceived value. We think it's going to make our life easier. We think it's going to make our work better, but ultimately it's our ability that it usually holds us back and our talent. So it's things we need to learn, not things we need to buy. Whereas with this Blue Eddy AC50, this thing is actually something that provides value to a set. You're always gonna be needing to charge batteries. You're always gonna need some sort of power solution. And having this on set and knowing that, hey, if the power goes out, if you don't have access to an outlet, you have this thing in your back pocket. It's just an insurance policy for electricity. And for that, I think it's absolutely invaluable. And on top of that, this thing isn't even that expensive. It's only 500 bucks Canadian. So it's kind of a no brainer purchase in my opinion, like buying a generator or renting one, the headache alone, it's worth buying one of these over all of that crap. So if you're a filmmaker, a content creator, a tech person, whatever, if you got something that needs to be plugged in, I would highly recommend this Blue Eddy power bank. I think it's such an invaluable investment. I think it's something everyone should have on set with them just as insurance for you when you don't know if you're gonna have access to power. And it's a great way to record interviews outside without dealing with the headache that comes with filming an interview outside. Thank you again to Blue Eddy for providing me with this power bank. I love it. I'm going to keep using it every single time I'm on set, probably. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our little true crime parody. Thank you again to Michael for being part of this video. If you have any questions about how we put this video together, my setup, the Blue Eddy, whatever, let's have a conversation about it in the comments. Sorry you had to look at my mustache. My name is Patrick Tomasso, and you'll see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.